What's up, y'all? And welcome back to the Crypto Wire. As this week has gone by, to you know, today being a weekend, I hope everybody's having a good Saturday, by the way. Uh, yeah, things are still pretty much trading sideways. we seen, you know, Bitcoin drop down for a hot second, and then, you know, it rolls back above 30 grand, which is amazing, and that's where we want to be. But um, there's a lot of greed in the market right now more than i would usually expect to um as you can see the fear and greed index right here on the right it's at a 60 right now so it's a lot of greed you know in the market but i do understand why there is a lot of greed because things have you know hit their all-time lows and people have just been buying up you know a lot of their favorite assets during the downtime not to mention you know Bitcoin seeing tons of inflows because of the announcement of a spot Bitcoin BT, uh, ETF. I'm about to say BTF. And then you got, you know, Ethereum that's, you know, no one's talking about a spot, you know, Ethereum uh, ETF. But at the end of the day, you know how we all thought when uh, Shanghai upgrade was happening that ethereum was going to crash because we thought a lot of people was going to unstake and sell their ethereum well that ended up being a total flop people didn't unstake as a matter of fact we've seen the number of stakers actually go up um to secure the network which is amazing and that's why i'm so bullish on bitcoin and ethereum as a whole as far as the liquidity you know coming into bitcoin you know 12 million over the past 24 hour uh you know as far as volume but these stable coins is just seeing the most liquidity you know constantly like if you take a look at tether right here 25 million in volume in the last 24 hours um a lot of this has to do with this first story that we're getting ready to jump into and that is the fact that celsius is actually selling off their altcoin portfolio to buy bitcoin you heard me right and ethereum you know bitcoin and ethereum so celsius network approved to convert altcoins into btc or eth and we're and we're talking about a huge portfolio of altcoins so if you see well like i already do i've noticed that some of the altcoins have already started falling in value while btc and ethereum are, are like i said just pretty much kind of sitting right where they are trading sideways so this story says the United States Bankruptcy Court for the S Southern District of New York has approved bankrupt crypto lender Celsius Network's plan to convert its altcoins into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, again, we don't have to go through this whole thing. At the end of the day, I'm happy that Celsius will be able to continue doing business, but it's definitely not good for the altcoin, you know, uh, pile of tokens that we all know and love we will see a decrease in value for tons we're not, and we're, we're talking about like uh polygon you know uh La terra well terra that they've been fell apart but again let me jump back to here so i can just like i said we're talking about projects like cardano like i said uh polka dot polygon you know solana litecoin things like that that will see a decrease in value due to celsius again selling their altcoin portfolio this also gives me more reason to teach my community that at the end of the day bitcoin and ethereum currently are the only safe assets in the crypto space as far as being targeted by the cftc or the sec anything can happen with these altcoins let's just let's just be real so what i've been doing recently is like i said pretty much just focus putting more focus on bitcoin and ethereum because i know that that when once the inst institutional adoption comes comes in like i said don't get me wrong altcoins will have you know a play in the matter but the biggest use cases and the biggest plays are going to come from bitcoin and ethereum okay so moving on 
Now, we have Bitcoin whales invest $2 billion in two weeks and all eyes are on a $35,000 Bitcoin. Now, again, due to the amount of, you know, institutional uh, readiness, I, I want to say, because we can't say adoption yet because it hasn't happened. It, it's in, it's in, you know, it's about to at some point. So we're just going to say because of all the, you know, ETF and institutional talk around the space, you know, it's got Bitcoin pumping. Now, let's see. Let's check it out a little bit more and see what they got to say. So Bitcoin's price closed June at thirty thousand five hundred, bringing it year to date gains to eighty five percent after outperforming the S&P 500 by nearly 70 percent. And Bitcoin at its highest peak. Uh, was actually up 95% uh, percent from year to date. So again, outperforming everything. Institutional investors now appear to be taking long positions on BTC. Will Bitcoin make more gains in uh, Q2 2023? I think that's what they was trying to say. So I definitely, uh, you know, think so. Because again, when we talk about institutions, let's jump over here because this is exactly what I want to talk about next anyway. As you can see right here, it says, big news, crypto now brace for a huge $27 trillion earthquake after Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Cardano, Dogecoin, Solana, and Litecoin price pump. Now, I don't know why they added all the rest of those uh, asset, you know, tokens or assets, whatever you want to call them into this list because what this story is all about is the institutional adoption behind the etf approvals if they get approved now we all know soon as blackrock announced its uh plans for a bitcoin etf filing that again all the rest of the you know biggest you know investors and uh fund managers came running right behind them and like I stated in one of my other videos, when you take a look at uh, BlackRock itself, right? BlackRock has 10 trillion assets under management. Now, we're, if you're wondering where they get that $27 trillion from, check it out. So it says, now the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, which looks after around 10 trillion on behalf of clients, has triggered a flood of US spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund applications that combine a boasting 27 trillion dollars in assets under management so they're talking about blackrock invesco fidelity the whole group of them combined makes up around 27 trillion dollars now we're not going to get the whole 10 trillion dollars from blackrock to come into bitcoin or uh the whatever amount you know that fidelity has under management we're not going to get that entire amount you know pushing the bitcoin but when you look at the big picture and even if just blackrock gets an approval for their etf again that doesn't mean that 10 trillion dollars is going to all of a sudden magically flow into bitcoin and the crypto market cap is going to be sitting at 11 trillion dollars it's not how it's going to work um trillions of dollars will come in we and it will make the crypto market a multi-trillion dollar asset but it still will take time because the key thing that's happening if this etf gets approved is it's going to be able for blackrock to add bitcoin into pension plans you know all all sorts of retirement plans 401ks things like that and we'll be able to invest in bitcoin you know through so many different facets you know far as traditional finance is concerned and then for our last story we got to talk about mastercard because mastercard is definitely trying to play a part in crypto this is not the first time i've talked about mastercard um when it comes to crypto and it probably won't be the last so mastercard to continue its crypto foray with beta launch of blockchain app store okay now in the latest blockchain push mastercard on wednesday said the payment processor would roll out a test version of its multi-token network 
this summer. The product was set to be launched as a beta in the in United Kingdom. But MasterCard's head of crypto and blockchain products in a Wednesday letter said that MTN will act as a test bed for developing live pilot applications and use cases with financial institutions, fintechs, and central banks. Again, everything that MasterCard has been doing in the crypto space is trying to bridge that gap that I talk about all the time between traditional finance and decentralized finance, crypto, okay? Now, again, you see this whole article, but now I wanna take y'all, before I let y'all get up out of here, I wanna go straight to MasterCard's website. Yes, we are currently on mastercard.us, okay? And what are what is MasterCard talking about on their website? Crypto and blockchain, scaling and securing the crypto ecosystem together. I'm trying to tell you guys, if you are still wondering Oh my God, is it too late to get into crypto? Did I miss out? Uh, is it a scam? Like all the, the FUD, it's, it should stop here. Because look, you don't have to take my word for it and believe me. But again, I know that five years from now, I'm going to be one of those millionaire, multi-millionaires who is going to be looked at like, man, he was talking about crypto all the time. All he ever talked about was crypto, this, crypto, that, in the beginning of it. And, you know, nope, I didn't think much of it because he really wasn't making that much money. But it's not about getting rich quick. It's about making money on a constant basis, putting that money to work for you so you can make more money to where you end up having enough in your nest egg to where that money can work for you for the rest of your life. It, it's a whole system. But again, just like the dot-com boom, don't be mad at me once Bitcoin blasts off and Ethereum blasts off and I done became a millionaire because I'm gonna look back at these videos and I'm like, man, I've been talking about this for the past two years. And I've been trying to teach the community what's going to happen in the coming future. So at the end of the day, guys, like I said, we got more institutional interest in crypto than ever before. And at some point, something is going to shake. So just I'm just saying, just don't say I didn't tell you so. And as usual, nothing on my videos are for uh, financial advice. This is all about financial education, learning what's going on in the crypto ecosystem, learning what is the be best practices in the crypto eco ecosystem, and again, learning how to make your money work for you. So with that being said, guys, y'all know I had to come and hit y'all with the daily news, or actually, I've been covering some other things, so I haven't been doing the daily news every day, but I know y'all needed to catch up on everything that's been going on this week. So, so far, this is what's going on in the crypto space this week. And as usual, I love you guys. And without y'all, I'm nobody. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And tell me what y'all are doing in the crypto space. And until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.